I like the look of stained glass. Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. I think stained glass looks really cool. Usually there's cool color, even though obviously I'm drawing with ink, so it's gonna be black and white in my case. The style is somewhat minimalist, because there's only so much detail you can put with glass panels. I'm not usually the biggest fan of the imagery, because you mostly find stained glass in churches, and I'm an atheist, but you can draw whatever you want, so that's fine. In today's case, I'll be drawing a tree in the middle of the forest. I am drawing in a moleskin sketchbook based on a loose sketch I did with a HB pencil. The pen I'm using is a cross fountain pen and the ink is cross brand as well. After I've drawn the main lines, I will switch to a rotring isograph 0.35 with rotring ink. Actually, I forgot to switch to the rotring at first and so the pattern of the leaves is still with the fountain pen. That forced me to redraw the lines to make them thicker because the point of switching to the rotring was to make smaller lines. Basically, I draw the glass panels with the fountain pen, to keep with the stained glass analogy, and I shade them with the rotring, doing a slight hatching. Since the leaves are made with the fountain pen instead of the rotring, the lines were a bit too thick, and it would have been too much to draw inside of them to shade them. I wanted to do simple hatching with three or four different orientations, but it would have been too dark. Instead, when I realized my mistake, I opted to make the lines a bit denser for the parts of the leaves that are further away. In a similar manner, I opted out of shading the tree, except to the side for like shadow effect. Keeping the contrast with the lighter tree trunk makes the full picture prettier, I think. If you agree, tell me in the comments, or tell me otherwise if you don't. While you're down there, feel free to ask me questions. Not necessarily about this drawing, but in general. I really want to make a Q&A video soon, but I need questions for that. I've been saying it for a few videos now, but if you don't ask me anything, I will have to write the questions myself, which won't be as interesting for you, for one, and will mean more work for me. That is something interesting, by the way, the notion of work. Because let's face it, this little YouTube channel of mine, as modest as it is, really does take work. But it's passion, so I don't really count the hours poured into it or stuff like that. Usually, I don't even think about it because I make the drawings anyway, and comparatively, making videos is not that much more. Like, take last Sunday's video for example, the fun straw slash water slide concept. The drawing took 4 hours and a half, the script took 1 hour and a half, and the audio recording and video editing took about 3 hours. That's 9 hours in total, and you can count approximately 1 hour after for posting it on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, making a TikTok maybe, posting on Reddit, etc. So 10 hours for a video that is less than 10 minutes long. I could make it longer, but after a while I run out of things to say. I could wait till I have more to say, but then I'm a bit late in my video planning. Anyway, that's not the point. Realistically, I can't make two videos like that every week. I can't even make one video like that every two weeks. That's too much work. It's simply too long. I've been doing YouTube videos for 2 years and 6 months, and you can imagine the amount of time, sweat, and overall work I've put into it. And I have gained literally 0 cents from it. This is not a rant, I'm not crying about it, again, this is something I enjoy. But I would certainly enjoy it more if it worked out better for me. I can't literally spend every minute I'm not at my day job doing more stuff for YouTube, because it would kill me. So yeah, maybe you could think about subscribing, that's one of the best things in terms of motivation. Why don't you show this video or another one I made to a friend of yours, or your dad, or your daughter, or someone? It's strange, because in a way I feel like I'm being really selfish to ask you to help me out with visibility on the platform, but on the other hand, I'm being in my right, I think. I'm literally gaining nothing from all of that, and you're not paying anything either. I have hundreds of hours of content online, literally free to access by anyone. It's an investment for the future, since I'm seeing growth in the audience of this channel, but you know, the faster it happens, the best it is for me, right? Anyway, I'm not throwing a tantrum, I'm not saying that I'll quit making YouTube videos if you don't subscribe, cause I won't. I enjoy it way too much to stop. Just that it would be nice if you subscribe. Think about it. YouTubers would stop asking you to subscribe twice in every video, at the beginning and at the end, if people did it. Think about it. While you think about it, I have a fun fact for you about analytics. Did you know that on Instagram, my abstract drawings work much better than my digital art, 
but on YouTube it's kind of the opposite? I didn't know, but now I do. I don't really have any clue as to why that happens, but it does, so there's that. Alright, I've talked for long enough. It's time to reveal my master plan. You see, I didn't have much to say about this drawing. It took 1 hour and 20 minutes to draw, you can synthesize the whole process in 2 sentences at most, but I couldn't make a 30 second video, so I wrote all of what I just said in order to make it more interesting. I hope that worked anyway and I fooled everybody. Tell me in the comments if I fooled you, this way I get even more comments, like it's really meta. Anyway, blah blah blah, Instagram, Twitter, description, like. It really is as tiring saying it in every video than it is hearing it in every video by anyone I watch. I'm Detroit and honestly, I just love drawing. Bye!